Hi, this is Sean Chua from alevelh2chemistry.com. Welcome back. Today we're going to discuss on the topic on atomic structure. And one of the concepts we're going to talk about is atomic orbitals, which is defined as the region where you have the highest probability of finding electrons around the nucleus. There are essentially four types of atomic orbitals known as your S, P, D, and F orbitals. In pre-university studies, uh, you will be asked to draw uh, the shapes of the uh, S, P, and D orbitals. F orbitals are a lot more complex and thus we will not be asked in pre-university levels. You will only be asked when you go to university and you do chemistry related courses. Now let's take a look um, at uh, the type of orbitals All right, by looking at the board over here. Now over here this is your S orbital, all right? S orbital, all right, are known to be spherical in shape, so I'll draw a circle in the middle of the intersection where uh, the three axes come together. Now, S orbital are found uh, in every principal quantum shell or principal quantum number, all right? So I'll indicate it as um, it's found in as early as shell number one and from there two, three, and four onwards, right? Now, P orbitals, we say it has a shape of a dumbbell, so it has a dumbbell shape which is made up of two lobes, if you take a look, all right? And this is the region where you can find the electrons. Now, P orbitals, there are actually three types known as Px, Py, and Pz. They are equal in energy level. The only difference between them is the direction where uh, they are phasing, all right? Whereby the electrons are aligned. Um, the name itself, Px, Py, and Pz, already indicate um, the direction or the axis whereby the electron density is being located. All right. So if you look at Px itself, the Px orbital is located along the x-axis. So I'll draw the loops, the dumbbell, along the x-axis. Or the Py is along the y-axis. Or the Z Pz is along the z-axis. Now, and the p orbitals, all right, uh, will be found from principal quantum shell number two onwards. So two, three, four, and onwards. All right, all these orbitals, or rather, all these shells will have p orbitals. So I'll just make an indication here. That is n equal or equal to two. So this once again is the three p orbitals that we'll have. Next, we will then look into the d orbitals. There are essentially five types of d orbitals which are separate into two different energy levels. In one level, you have your dxy, dyz, and dxz. All right? These three types of d orbitals will have similar shape which we call it clover leaf or it's two dumbbells that are interlinked together. We'll take a look in a short while. And the other level, all right, you will have your dx squared minus y squared and the dz squared in the same energy level, all right, which is different from the top three. Now, d orbitals are present and found in the third principal quantum shell and onwards from there. So you have a principal quantum shell, uh, shell three, four, and five, so on and so forth. Now, uh, we shall take a look uh, on how to draw the d orbitals. D orbitals is very complex to draw in exam and I really encourage that all students really practice and master this uh, drawing of the D orbitals before you go for examination because you're going to waste a lot of time in the examination uh, drawing and redrawing them and essentially you probably get it wrong by not you know, being very careful on showing what the examiners are looking out for. Now, let's start by looking at the top three type of uh, so-called the D orbitals. Now, I'm going to have the axis down again, X, Y, and Z. Uh, for this tree, it's really useful to draw the plane, all right? You realize I use a black color uh, marker ink to, to draw uh, a plane, all right? Now, X, Y, what it means is that the orbitals, all right, are uh, found in between the x and the y axis, all right? So if you realize this is the x axis, 
this is the y-axis so this will be the plane that governs the xy all right so your orbital your dxy will be here it's somewhere along here and this is your first dumbbell all right so you realize it's along the x and y axis same over here and over here x this is y there will be another one over here and over here so this is your d x y orbital which has a clover leaf shape similarly we go to y and z um, y z means the orbital is found between the y and the z axis so between this and the one going in to the paper all right so y z i'm going to draw a plane once again in black all right to identify where it really is the y z and then i'm going to draw the clover leaf so y and z it will be here all right and i realize this is z okay and this is y axis so you have the other dumbbell over here as well as this side just remember it's a clover leaf shape all right and last but not least over here we have the dxz so xz the clover leaf the dumbbell should be along or between the x and the z axis so uh, this is z axis this is x axis all right so it will be over here because this will be z x or x z it's the same so take a look it should be around here and it should be here and then it should be here global leaf shape so this is your x z the orbitals now let me move on to x square minus y square uh, this is uh, easier all right in order to look at it um, this means that the clover leaf is still a clover leaf uh, shape um, will be aligned along the x and the y axis so let's find out where is the x which is here and this is the y we're going to do a clover leaf so this will be the first dumbbell and then i will have the second dumbbell going into the paper so it's going to be like this so this is your x and this is your y so this is your dx squared minus y squared d or b those for dz squared all right um, it's even easier okay but some people find it confusing it's because um, the orbital will be aligned along the z-axis we call it a dumbbell with a collar so there is a dumbbell over here but there is a collar and then this is the other part of the dumbbell all right so let's take a look again uh, you have your dxy dyz and dxz orbitals which are clover leaf shape and then they tend to be along two axes so it's really useful to draw the plane there all right so that you can look at it clearly and next we go to your dx square minus y square it's still a clover leaf but this is much easier so i don't have to draw the plane called the axis itself the line uh, allow me to draw the dumbbell in or the clover leaf in so this will be along the x axis and the y axis dz square is a dumbbell a p orbital shape if you look at it along the z axis but in the middle there is what we call a collar all right and this is where you find the electrons uh, around the nucleus i hope you find the discussion useful with regards to drawing the shapes of atomic orbitals once again this is very important and in the exam a lot of students struggle to uh, draw them uh, correctly with the given amount of time so feel free to share this with your friends who need help in drawing atomic orbitals and i look forward to seeing you in the next video thank you